there! Can you still remember this unboxing video? This time I will be customizing the doll from that video. For this project I was inspired by a Victorian antique kind of aesthetic for which I made some sketches. I had the idea of a spirit or angel-like kind of a melancholic look, so I am thinking of adding some wing and cross elements as well. I recently got this illustration book by my favorite illustrator and her melancholic looking characters also gave me lots of inspiration for this project. This time I want to focus more on details instead of colors since I want almost everything to be white. I got these lovely delicate vintage style laces from an Etsy store. These laces are so gorgeous and the seller was very kind, so for those interested I'll link her store in the description. Before I start making the outfit, the head needs a new face to match the aesthetic I'm going for. I use this brush cleaning solution to gently remove the existing face up. the head with three layers of sealant and then begin the face up by carefully painting the eye lines. Brushing the eyes with some red and copper toned pastel powders to give kind of a slightly sickly look to the eyes. I continue this for many layers until the color intensity looks good. I also begin blushing the lips as well. I use the same pastel powders as well as a kneaded eraser to sketch the eyebrows. I'm adding some hair details with paint to the eyebrows.
After all the blushing, I paint the lower eyelashes. I know many people prefer to draw them before the blushing, but for me I feel like the lashes get kind of dusty looking if I do them earlier on and add the necessary layers of pastels on top. And it just kind of feels like a hassle to me. But this is just my way of doing this. like vibes of this custom, I'm giving this doll some white details on the eyelashes as well as the lash line. I add some more lines and lip lines and adjust the colors before adding the last coats of sealant. Lastly, I add gloss to the face as well as glue in the eyelashes. And the face-up is finished! Now I can start on the outfit. I will need a new pattern for this body, so I will first make a pattern for the body's part of the dress. Some subscribers have been asking me for a tutorial on how to make patterns for doll clothes, so I thought I would show the process here. First I wrap the doll's torso carefully with tape and then I will draw the patterns. I draw half of both the front and back pieces and then cut them out. I will make an additional seam at the front. Now I just draw the pattern on paper. mark my patterns carefully so I know for which body and clothes they are made for. I also made a sleeve pattern for this dress, which is just a basic white rectangular shape. Now let's just cut all the pieces from the main fabric. After finishing the edges, I can finish the front piece by closing the front slits to make a nice seam. I do 
the same for the lining piece. I want to make this cross shape out of lace for the front, so I'm doing it now. Now I can connect the body pieces together and sew on the lining as well. stitch and connect the side seams of both fabrics. to the sleeves, but it is a bit too wide for me, so I carefully cut it to be thinner. This doesn't work for all lace, so you need to be careful not to damage the lace if you try this. If your lace looks like it won't unravel by cutting it, then it would be safe to do so. I also decided to thread a satin ribbon through the lace for a more intricate design. After sewing the lace on and hemming the sleeve, I will add the wider part of the lace to the cup. As you can see, cutting lace into two pieces is really nice to get more variety out of using lace. To make the sleeves cute and puffy, I'll gather them with elastic at the points where I sewed on the lace. the sleeve, I'll close the seam, gather the top part and sew the sleeve onto the armholes. of this huge rectangle. I really want to focus on making lots of tiny details this time, kind of like what Victorian children's dresses have, so I'm adding lots of lace and tiny pin tucks to the skirt. I also want to add many small ruffles to the middle of the skirt as well as the hem. After spending a couple hours cutting all the required fabric strips, I'm gathering them with elastic. Since I will need lots of ruffles, I figured using elastic would make the gathering process not only less time consuming, but the end result would also look more neat. After sewing the ruffle on, I just cut off the elastic. I continue adding lace, pin tucks and frills until I'm happy with the end result.
foot just gather the skirt as usual attach it to the bodice and close the skirt and the dress looks about done except it is not unfortunately I noticed a pretty big mistake as you can see the skirt is much more narrow than in my sketch it looks kind of nightgown like and not at all what I had in mind so after thinking about it for a while I decided to admit my mistake and try to fix it I opened the back seam and spent some additional days making this roughly bustle piece to make the skirt wider as you can see even big mistakes can happen along the way and it is okay most of the times they can be fixed as long as you don't panic I like the end result much better now now I can happily add the details to the dress like snaps to the back and I will also make a round collar for it to make the neckline prettier I have this copper colored rose pendant which I'll use to make a necklace and attach it to the center of the cross. I added a couple of red beads that kind of look like blood drips and I think they add a nice accent to the dress. I attached the collar to the neckline with snaps and finished the bodice with a little lace bow. I will add these same lace bows to the skirt as well for a finishing touch. After finishing the dress for this custom project, next I'll make some accessories, beginning with this rectangular head accessory. To match the dress nicely, I use the same lace as on the dress as well as some cross motifs and bows. I had the idea to add a small veil to the headpiece since I thought the see-through fabric would add to the ghostly look of the whole outfit. I'm adding some wire to the edge so that I can pose the veil. Dried rose 
those buds that I want to add to the headpiece. I'm covering them with UV resin to make them into pendants. I think these dried roses give a nice vintage feel to the outfit and add a hint of color to it so it's not just one color from top to bottom. For the shoes I wanted to try something new, so I made soles from polymer clay and used the piece to create a rubber mold. The sole itself will be made from clear bicomponent resin, which I will pour into the mold. To continue with the rose theme from the headpiece, I'm mixing dried rose petals into the resin. After the resin has hardened, I can unmold the shoe sole. To finish, I coat the sole with clear gloss varnish. The shoe soles will be glued to these shoes. If you want to know how I make these, I will link to a video in the upper corner. Here are the finished shoes. Some of you may remember, I plan to include some wing-like elements to this outfit. I plan to make a necklace with some wings attached to it, however, this seemed a bit simple to me and I like to challenge myself, so I thought why not try to make full-sized angel wings. I wanted the wings to be articulated, but lightweight at the same time, so I plan to make the wings from three separate parts. The first two parts I'm making out of thin resin pieces that will be connected together. The third and biggest part of the wing needs to be as light as possible, so I'm using fabric to make it. wire in between the fabric pieces so I can bend the wing which I hope will add some more realism to it.
connecting all the pieces, the wing bases are done. Now for the feathers. I'm gluing on all the feathers in layers. I'm starting from the edges so I can first decide on the wing shape. For this process I had some photos of swan wings nearby, so I could use that as a reference. the process on the other side too. I'm using the other side of the feathers so the inner side of the wing looks more realistic. I decided to add some fluff to the edge to finish the wings. I'm pretty happy how the wing looks and how it moves too. For some added security, I added some snaps to the wings. The wings also bend quite nicely. The wings will be attached to the doll's back with these magnets. I covered them with feathers for a neater look. As you can see, I ran into a problem. I greatly underestimated the amount of magnets I would need. The wings just refused to stay in place, no matter what I did. After some frustration, I decided to make some modifications. I connected the wings to each other with a thin piece of resin for more support and added way more magnets. connect the wings to this resin piece which connects to the doll's back with snaps. I had to sacrifice some aesthetics for the wings to work, but I'm happy I got them to stay in place in the end. And now the project is finally finished! I hoped for the end result to be something melancholic and the character to resemble something between a spirit and an angel. Which one do you think she resembles more? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you subscribe if you'd like to see more creative doll content. See you in the next video. Bye bye.